comfort, yes, thank you. Now you have the other side of the car. The comfort, put it in everything in comfort, and it's such a great, uh, such a great. Such a great um, cruiser, basically. And it is such a great cruiser. Look at that. Got my cruise control on. I'm chilling. And uh, for long journeys, this is a great, great car. Very comfortable. Seats. The M Sport package, of course, get a bit harder seats, but they're still very, very comfortable. I can easily do a lot of hours of driving uh, without getting tired, which is nice. One thing that you should get though is the big screen. If you're looking at one of these second hand, trying to get the big screen one it does actually make the car much look better. And the screen, this screen is kind of shit. This has the old die drive system, but it still gives you very easy to drive, you know, very easy to use. Sorry, uh, you get the average combustion of this car is 5, 5.3, which is very, very impressive. Don't forget, this is a two-ton car that's having that that kind of fuel economy. Very impressive. Uh, you got, of course, MP3 capability. You got AUX. Everything is in the center console right there. And USB ports. For example, an Audi doesn't come with a USB port. The Audi finally put some USB ports in the car. But if you're looking like an A6 from 2000 and let's say 2013, it won't have won't have the stupid fucking USB ports, sadly. You get a ton of standard equipment as well. Cruise control is standard, two-zone climate control is standard, uh, and of course you get the nice BMW as standard. The options that you should look for if you're buying one of these, new or used, is if you like driving, get the M package. You have to get the ZF gearbox. The ZF gearbox is such a beautiful gearbox in every way. It's very comfortable. Uh, it, it's like I said, if you get it in manual, this is a GT car. It's a big cruiser. It's a sedan. It's supposed to cover a lot of mileage. So the manual gearbox sort of ruined that. And you get worse fuel economy, and it's not as fast. So it's only. It's only fair that you get the ZF. And they are very reliable with gearboxes as well. Now we have been cruising, so uh, now we're on a nice lane. Let's put it in sport. The gearbox, of course, automatically shift down a gear. And uh, yeah, you can have some fun. Put it in manual, there we go. so well so I won't try to kill myself nice here what I can tell is uh, has a very balanced chassis great balance in the car of course it does understeer a bit but it's a two-ton family sedan so of course it will understeer a bit but that's okay but you have that, it's still, you have that traditional BMW feel to it. It's rear wheel drive, uh, you have that BMW feel to it. And that's the most important thing. One thing when I, this car was launched, I thought it wouldn't have that feel, but it so does. It has that BM, typical BMW feel. The chassis in this car is so magnificent. You can really feel that the engineers have really worked their ass off perfecting it. And they have. I love that road. I'm gonna go on that road again. No traffic as well. That's always nice. You can get 
the adaptive suspension. This car is fitted with that. Uh, so you can, if you put it like in sport mode, it does get sharpened up a bit. A bit stiffer. Downshifters are so good, this gearbox is so smooth. Upshift, downshift are very, very smooth. It's a great, great car to drive. Especially if you get the more engine, more powerful engine ones. Then you literally have the perfect everyday driver's car. For an unbeatable price. And I would so buy this over a second-hand Merc. Or a second hand A6. The A6 is really good, and the Mercedes C Class is is E Class. Sorry, is very good as well. Then you have the Lexus GS, uh, but in Europe or in Sweden at least, you have to get the stupid hybrid system, which is I'm not a big fan of the hybrid system because it does add a lot of weight to to the car, and you have to change the battery every I think every eight years, which is in expense so what I have to complain about this car well the rear seating in the middle is not the best you have a big transmission tunnel so you can only sit two people in the back it's very uncomfortable to sit in the, in, um, in the middle seating position uh, another thing is that the trunk is not maybe as big as uh, an A6 and you have to pay extra you have to really this is true you have to pay extra for folding seats so if you're looking at the second hand market check that the car has folding seats but when you fold the seats it's actually very very big of course this car is stop and stop let's in 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 inactivate that shit horrible system and the 320d gets such a great fuel economy I will not do a donut I'm more mature than that look at that look how mature I am not doing a burnout oh look at me all grown up in my 5 series this uh, particular car has uh, an annoying sound when you put on the air condition But that's a quick fix, probably. So I can go through what happens when you put in these different modes. We have Eco Pro. Eco Pro, uh, it makes the throttle response not as sharp, so it's more for economic, so you can drive more economical. Uh, the gearbox go into a Eco Pro mode, so it will shift very early and even coast. Uh, then you have Comfort. Eco Pro is basically, if you care about fuel economy, put it in Eco Pro and all is good. Comfort is the normal setting, I would say. And it's just like I said, it's just comfortable. <laughs> uh, it's nothing more to, to add. And then you have Sport. What happens when you put in Sport? As you can probably see, the gearbox shifted down and become more responsive for more spiritual driving. And the suspension stiffens up and the steering gets more weight to it. It's kind of a synthetic weight to it, but it still it does get a bit sportier. And Sport Plus mm, turns the traction control off and makes the steering even heavier and the suspension even harder, it seems like. But for and then you can hold down this button and then you turn everything off. If it's raining, you can have some fun. But for now, for example, I'm on the highway. I don't need anything else. I'm gonna just put it in eco and cruise. Like I said, great fuel economy in this car. 
the man who owned this car has driven 10,000 miles. Under those 10,000 miles, he has been averaging 84 kilometers an hour, and uh, the fuel economy is 5.3. 5.3 per 100 kilometers for a two-ton family sedan is very impressive and this is a very good highway cruiser kind of car um, it's a very very good highway cruiser uh, it's very comfortable on the highway it's actually built for the highway basically so you're on the highway put in eco pro you put your tunes on via Bluetooth to your phone and BMW system is such an easy system to use. The iDrive system is uh, very simple to use and get used to it very fast. Uh, if you buy an older car you don't get the beautiful, beautiful screen uh, and the beautiful uh, logos and dials as you get in the new ones but still very easy to use. And you even got some uh, fast bottom here for navigation, telephone, menu, media. Um, so yeah, it's very easy to use. There's not a lot more to say about this car. Again, you can have a lot of options as well, lane change assist, um, adaptive cruise control. Uh, you can get a shit ton of options in this car. Let's drive a bit faster and see how it is. A little bit higher speed, how comfortable it is. Again, it's very, very comfortable. I mean, any modern cars, you barely feel it. It's actually very quiet. You don't hear the engine at all, almost. 320D is a very good um, highway car. Let's see if this motherfucker moves. Yes, he does. Thank you, my friend. But no, it didn't. It does take some time to get up to speed in one of these. In the diesel. In the 320, it's not very powerful. <laughs> Is the 184 horsepower enough? Everyday use, yes. But it would be nice to have a bit more oomph, as they say. More power does not hurt anyone. For example now, if you have a 530 for example, you have that beautiful pull. Oh, we're gonna do something very, very dangerous. There we go, hard on the brakes. This car is on 10,000 kilometers and it feels very, very still. No, no cracks, no rattles. It feels like a brand new car almost. Steering wheel as well as so somewhere on it. Of 10,000 miles, but not very much. This has the half Alcantara seats. Alcantara, you have to clean it very often, but for 10,000 miles, look how beautiful that is. As standard as well, you get parking sensors. Uh, if you want a backing camera, you have to pay extra for that, but it's not, not a ton of money. This thing has, this car has uh, front and back parking sensors. Standard, I think, it only comes with the back. I'm not 100% sure on that one. Another thing about you could probably get this beautiful dial here to tell you how much you need to accelerate and if you put too much it will war like it won't hit. look take your foot off the pedal it says it forces you to drive economically and the air condition actually turns off if you put it in eco pro 